out. Okay, so I'm back today with doing um, my sewing costume. Now, um, I was going to do it when I did the pants, um, the bottom half of the tankini. I was going to do the straps for the pants, but it didn't quite work that way. So I'm doing the straps now. So what I've done, um, I'm so following this pattern. It's the Mah Maharanis swimsuit. I think I'm pronouncing that wrong, but I will leave the link and the website in the description bar below. Um, but now we're going to show, sorry, show. We're going to sew the straps. So I've cut my straps out. Um, now I will show you whereabouts to go looking to how much of a strap you'll need so what i've got for here is the measurements for the wait a minute now let me just get it right because i don't want to mess this part up i think it's for the it's not for the elastic no, it's not the elastic it's for the actual strap so when you do all your measurements like I explained in the first step I showed you the chart um, you will need to go off the chart and then that will tell you then on how much now this is page 15 so we're on page 15 doing the straps so it gives you the sizes at the top first of all not to two and it goes all the way up to size 26 so if you are overseas and you are doing this pattern overseas just check whether those sizes are because different countries have different sizes so just check i mean it doesn't matter because when you measure yourself it'll tell you what size you come under and like i said right at the very beginning we'll show you how you measure yourself and um, what things you what sort of things I suggest you doing to circle them. So you'll need a couple of things to do your straps. You'll need the fabric that you've chosen to do your bathers in. You will need now we're working from the narrow strap option. So right at the very start, I picked that I want a tankini. I'm gonna go for the V front so that it'll have a bit of shape at the front. And I'm going to go with an altar back, but um, I'm going to do like I did on the last one. And I'm going to create some sort of a tie. Now, I did that on the last one, but I just followed that pattern. And um, don't worry about the bottom. So it's this bit that you'll need, this middle section. So going from that, you have a look on this chart. Now, this is page 15. And I know that I want an altar back. So I'm looking at, um, looking all the way up and it goes straight, sh straight shoulder straps. That means going over your shoulders, a cross shoulder strap, which is the cross one. And um, the altar straps, the open back long tie straps. Now there's the open back when i did the altar straps i had enough elastic to make myself two hoops that's what i'm basically going to do rejigger the pattern to what i want it to be so you go all the way down till you find the back of whatever you're making so if you wanted to make a ruffle you would have a look at the bottom here and it's got ruffle low scoop ruffle low scoop middle and the bottom so that would be the mid scoop and this would be the low scoop so you would just determine what 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 when you what pattern you're going from so whatever pattern you've chosen on page three is what you'll need to reference to on page 15. so i'm going to show you a bit of a trick now so now you've determined that you go ahead and you'll cut this out now this is on two pages hence why there's a little bit of salad tape um, and like I said, right at the very start, the pattern is built up of different pages and you will stick them together and then you cut out the pattern you desire and go from there. Anyway, saying all that, um, so this is the narrow tie um, and it says narrow tie ruffle binding template. Don't let the, if you're just doing the narrow tie, don't let the ruffle binding 
um, put you off. It, this is the template you will need to do the narrow tie option. If you're doing a wide tie option, have a look because there is a pattern, especially for the wide narrow, the wide tie. Um, so if you're doing the wide tie, this isn't it. It'll be the next one done. So this is the, the one that we need to reference to. Now, how wide to go? So you want to go, it tells you at the top, um, it tells you the narrow strap ties are recommend recommendation of for options. There are many ways you can tie or add straps. So you can use these measurements as guidelines and try on your swimsuit first to see where you'd prefer to add them. Now, I did do this, but I did this at the later stage. Um, only because, like they say, try it on and see where you want the straps to be, which I am going to be doing that um, and showing you exactly where I want my straps to be um, on the swimming costume. So it says, this is the template on page 114 to 120. It's actually telling you where to go and look for the narrow tie option. Um, and you can use it for the width and otherwise all width. So you can, oh, I didn't realize you could use this for the width one as well. Ignore what I just said. And <laughs> um, all widths, whether they are narrow or wide, they are 1.5 in width. So don't go over um, that 1.5. If you like to tie your wide strap low back ties, get two and add five inches in length. Cut your elastic same length as your ties. So what we're going to do is you lay your fabric completely down. So when my tea gets off my fabric, lay your fabric completely down. Now, obviously, this is going to be a lot bigger. Um, find out first how much you need. Now, this is what I didn't talk about. So this will tell you what how much you will need. So it's got it in centimetres and then it's got it in inches. So for the ultra straps, it's telling me to also cut two. So don't forget to cut two. And then you just find whatever size it is you want to cut. Now, like I said right at the very start, I'm all for sharing how to do the pattern. But personally, I won't be sharing my size. But it's quite easy to do. You just literally follow the line. To whatever one it is if it's ultra straps and you're making it for 0.2 you'd go 0.2 and you'd go across and then that would be your measurement so it's a bit like um, a timetable like like a timetable so now you've got the templates you've got your measurements now you need to cut it so i've cut mine pre-hand but this is how i did it you lay it completely flat you fold your fabric in half. So now my fold of my fabric here. You mark in uh, 1.5, whatever 1.5 is, and mark it. So I mark mine on the fabric. Now this is fusible, so it will come off. That isn't 0.5, I think it's a bit bigger, but this is just an example. Mark it there. And then with your rotary cutter and your ruler, if you wanted to like do dot to dot, which I find a lot easier, this is what I mean by dot to dot. So you just match the dot is up and then cut it. Don't go and cut this fold. When you've cut it, you will land up then with the strip that you will need. Um and that's how to do it so always cut more and then you can always take off so you've got your template you've got you've cut your fabric which is this this is my fabric i've chosen some of it's got the pattern on some of it hasn't am i bothered not really um but i've now got two because i'm doing alternate on this one too right and then you will need um an elastic now the elastic for this 
it can't, you can't use ordinary elastic the reason for this being it needs to be um swimwear because we're making a swimwear costume because it's um scuba lycra whatever you want to call it it needs to be swimwear elastic now um you can buy the swimwear elastic off amazon on ebay um this came no point in, that it's six millimeters width and it's 15 meters on there and i've managed to do my bathers with it i've done one set and i've still got loads left to do the other so once you've done all that you will then need to find out what your elastic measurements need to be and this is what i was looking at so um it tells you at the top whatever you've cut this out that is what you'll need to get your straps out now I haven't cut my elastic as of yet because I wanted to explain it a little bit more and um, so I'm going to go and cut them now and then I will be back um, with my elastic and one of my sides um, and then we'll, we'll sew it. So I'm going to put the pattern away, I'm going to cut my elastic and I shall be back with you. Hey everybody I'm back, I've got my two pieces of elastic and I've got my two pieces of material so one piece at a time get your one piece of material on your one piece of elastic now i think i've cut one of them way too bigger than the rest but it doesn't matter and i'm going to use some of my quilting clips that moves. and all you want to do just for now is clip this. don't worry if it's not to the edge and I'll move the camera now for you to see it's fine if it's not to the edge or if it's, even if it's not straight on the fabric it's fine because there's a reason for it <laughs> like everything else there's a reason for it okay. So you clip all this all the way up and then once I've done both sets and I've clipped it all, I shall be back with you. Actually, I'll speed this process up so you can see me not doing it to the right. Okay, so I've pinned it all and I found them a little bit short, but that doesn't matter because I found when I did the other ones that my ties were a little bit too big. So it doesn't matter, um, but if you want to rectify it, if we want to, let's rectify it. And all you need to do to rectify it is go and clip this stitch. And I gather this fabric and I'm going to do a straight stitch because I don't want it to pull. I don't want it to stretch this way. So I'm going to just do a straight stitch there and then I'm going to attach my elastic. Okay, so that now that's all sewn. I'm just going to cut. I'm just going to do a rough cut because I'm not being gonna help me if I do a rough cut rather than a, um, a straight one anyway okay so there's my my add-on so I'm gonna open the seam and then I'm gonna attach with my extra clips where they are for I'm just going to attach my elastic to them. So, let me bring you down. You can sort of see what I've done. There's one there, and I'm just going to leave that there. And I'm going to 
Simon and Prey. I've got one. I haven't, I haven't, actually. Do you know what I've done? Look, I've done it inside out. So it's white on the other end. How much elastic am I losing? Two inches. No. I'm going to start again, but I'm going to speed it up. Okay, so munching on apple when I'm crafting. As you can see, I've sewn my extra piece. So I'm now going to cut this down a little bit because we don't need all that. And I'm going to pull this elastic just out a little bit. Like I say, we won't need all this. And now's the time where I go searching and praying for another clip. And I found one. And clip this. So... Right, we've done all that. You've got your extra if you were worried about it. Right, now's the time to sew it. So what I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to sew the elastic to the fabric. And I'm going to do that with a small zigzag. I'm going to show you exactly what stitch I'm going to be using. So I put one strap aside because we both straps are done the exact same way. Yes, that is my pretty I'm crafting. So I'm hoping you can see I am doing like a real small zigzag. And that will enable me then to um for it to still stretch, but it will allow me at the same time to sew my elastics. Because you want it to stretch, you don't want it to not stretch because these are your this is what's going to hold everything together. And the last thing you want to be doing is putting everything on display on the day. So, all I'm going to do is literally sew on top of the elastic. Um, I'm not going to go any way, particular way with this. If you find, I'm going to do a couple of stitches now. Um, if you find your fabric is not moving anywhere, mine is barely just touching at the minute. Right, I might because I've got it on slow too. And you find that it's not moving or it's not doing anything, just give it a gentle pull that side. Um, now mine's moving, I can sort of let it do its own thing. So you want to stitch on top of your elastic. There is a reason for it. Pick your clips out as you go. Do that to your both your strips and I shall be back. Okay, so what I've done, I sort of went ahead and done one. Mm -hmm. But, however, so that's what it's supposed to look like once it's finished. That's what we're aiming for. Now I can show you what we're aiming for. I sort of got carried away. So what I've done is on the other one, I stopped. <laughs> I sewed it, the elastic to there. It's not straight. Um, neither is it at the edge, which you can clearly see it's not at the edge at all. The elastic stopped there, and this is where my fabric is. So you get your... Right, now... With the one I did, so the one I showed you right at the very start, I had trouble um, when I did the straps and I followed the pattern. The On the pattern, it doesn't tell you how to cover the edge, cover the ends, because they allow for the elastic to be seen. Now, I didn't quite like the idea of the elastic being seen, so on this one, what I've done is cut no, you won't need that but cut a little bit so leave a little bit from there 
and you're going to fold it over and then that way your edge won't be seen so grab your scissors make sure you cut the right side otherwise you'll start all over again with your strap and I'm just going to follow the line of my elastic so I'm not worrying about you know like I said to you don't worry if you haven't cut it straight to the edge because you quite lose a lot of fabric um, considering what you're doing and the fact that they say oh cut it to 1.5 inches in width you're losing quite a lot of fabric it doesn't matter you can lose a little bit but what I mean is um, compared to what you've cut it at right so keep going on cutting and I sort of got carried away with that one I was like oh I haven't filmed it I haven't shown you what to do <laughs> so I thought well the two of them will match anyway so I'll just show the two show the two as they are so I would have sped this up except I'm nearly to the end but I am being cautious about cutting my fabric right to the edge of the elastic so move this this is no longer in use and you're going to take your pins back and what you're going to do now is you're going to turn the fabric so you're going to turn it once and then you're going to turn it twice and you do that all the way down making sure before I turn it let me let me do that again because I've forgotten to do something this isn't in the pattern this is purely because um, I don't want my elastic to be seen and with anything you sort of learn as you the more you do the more you learn so with this one I want it to turn it upwards like so so i am you know there's not a whole lot i've turned but i've turned enough so i can sew what i'm going to do now is i'm just going to sew that on there and then i'm going to roll it twice which i shall show you what i mean i'm going to roll it so i'm just going to sew that over that's too small which I have do a little bit more okay I'm just probably gonna put it there like so and I'm all I'm gonna do is a zigzag Move these cuts out of my way. It doesn't matter if this is straight either, because the idea is you just don't want to see the edge of the pattern, the, the uh, edge of the elastic. And you'll see how straight my stitch is. See how like wavy that is? <laughs> but it, it does the job for what I want it to do. It's just because it's slippery as to where I'm going with it. So fold it over. And I'm going to stitch this side down. Okay. So I've just folded it over a little bit. I'm going to get rid of my threads and then and after I've only and only after I've done that now I can sort of roll it so I'm going to roll it once and this should be enough to roll it twice this should be And you 
pin it as you go don't worry about whether you've got um enough of because the elastic is because the fabric you're using is more elasticated you can pull it into shape and then you pin this then or clip it clip it would be a best option because it's um elastic it's got of a bit of I'm going to switch my clips now to this side. So I'm rolling it. Oh, wait, I've stopped. Wait a minute. Roll it. You roll it once, roll it twice. Roll it once, make sure it's all flat. Roll it twice. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna roll it and um, clip it all the way down till I've got it all clipped, and then I will come back to you. Okay, so as you can see, it's all, well, some of you can see it, it's all clipped. So what I'm gonna do now, so I'm actually going to sew, now I'm going to sew, right on the edge. And your stitches will be straight because your elastic is straight. So it'll keep your stitches nice and tight for you. So right on the edge, I'm going to do a little um, zigzag as I've done everything else so far. Um, and that's where I'm going to stitch. So I think I'm going to start this end. It makes it a little bit easier for me. Uh, I'm just going to sew all this now and I shall um, come to you, back to you once I've completed it and sewn it all. So, um, is that the right one? Yeah, that's the right one. <laughs> I was going to say, I was going to show you the one that I'd done. So what I've done is I've sewn the edges um but now we haven't quite finished it so now what we've got to do is literally cut off the ends so some of the ends will be fairly easy like these ones are a little bit trickier trickier because of where it is but we need to sew not on the stitch but close to it Ideally, I would have liked it more to cut it straight. I would have liked it more there. I'm just taking my time. Cutting it as I'm going. And you do that all the way to the end and then I will explain to you something else I have just been doing as well but you might want to do that doesn't it does not say at all in the pattern to do um hence why I'm saying you might want to do it I'm going to turn this round because it might be a bit easier on me now to turn it round and do this edge. And like I say, be careful not to cut your actual strap. You're just cutting away the excess.
I'm just cutting away what I missed. Cutting the other way. I'm sliding in between my fingers as I'm going. Right, that would be that cut. Now, now you've done that, you should have two straps. But what I've also done is I cut um, my hoops. Now, it doesn't say to do this in the pattern, so don't feel you have to do it. Um, with this one as well, you might want to sort of trim the excess off if you have any excess very little on that one and i haven't trimmed these so i don't think i have um it doesn't say to do it on the pattern however um i on the last one i cut them out right at the edge and on the end and then i figured that i didn't cut my hoops out so this is, where's my to give you an eye guide, this is about three, roughly three inches long, and I've got two, because of course two straps, you'll need two hoops, um, and that's basically it for the straps and the hoops, so you're all sort of bearing to go, um, and all you need now is to start our top, which I'm starting a little bit different to the pattern because I want to put flowers on. Um, and how I make the flowers, I'm just going to give you a rough idea on how I make them. Grab yourself something round. I've got some quarter inch um, tape here. And I'm literally just going to cut round my circle. Not being neat with it at all. And it might fall off. There, there. there that's better. <laughs> that's better. Okay. And what you want to do is now I've started to do it on the top and I'll show you where to, where to sew them on and how to sort of make them into flowers. This is not on the pattern. This is just something I wanted to put on my bathers. I mean, I could have put pearls and diamantes on, but I was thinking about me, you know, getting in and out of the pool. Would it get rustic over time? That sort of thing. Um, so I made myself some flowers. And how you do them, you just cut your circles out and we're going to sew them. And all I'm going to do is this is just a bit of a, a thing i'm gonna stick it right in the edge and i'm gonna sew on the edge all the way around with my um small zigzag stitch and once i've done that i shall be back okay so i forgot i did forget to tell you to make the flowers on the type of flowers i'm making again they're not on the pattern it's just something that i want to add um you're gonna need five and i'm just cutting off the start starting thread so what you do five petals will give you one flower fold it in once fold it in twice to give you that fold if you want to clip it while you do the next one so you're going to fold it in half and fold it in again and what we're going to do is I'm going to use um, not a small zigzag now, but quite wide zigzag. And I'm going to stitch them two together as i just shown you. And if you want to overlap them a little bit, you can do it. Of course you can. And make sure it goes over one fabric over the other. So it's going over this fabric, then that one, then this one, then that one. And if you find it slipping, which this one is a little bit, you can push the fabric um, together to stop it slipping. So now we've done two. I'm going to cut the start of the thread off. 
right fold it in half once and then sort of fold it a little bit now this is a little little petal so i don't want to take too much off and i'm gonna sew that now to there and like i say five of these will give you a nice uh, puffy flower they're not they're not flat flowers at all and you could even make these flowers you know who's to say you could make them to put on top of jars i'm sure you could so imagine three again fold it in half once and i'm only doing one side because i'm going to be sewing the other side as i go so fold that in a little bit not too much and this one is bigger than that petal, so I've put it behind it instead of in front of it. And then I'm going to sew this onto that then. Go. So there's my four, and then the fifth one, fold in half. And I'm going to take this, no, I'm going to take this side first. <laughs> so we've got that. And I'm going to fold, and it doesn't matter if it comes over the edge. It honestly does not matter at all. And I'm going to line these two up. And I'm going to sew this together. And the reason I'm not fast forwarding this bit is because you'll sort of see the flower growing. Now I'm having to push my fabric together and um, you won't go through many layers and I'm making sure that it's going in the middle as well since I'm coming close to the middle. Now I've done four, I'm going to push that in slightly and push this in slightly and then I'm going to sew this one and this time I'm going to sew all the way from the top and then I'm going to stop in the middle. And then this should give me my flower. And it's the way you sew it on your... It's the way I'm sewing it on my bathers that gives the dimension. These, when you first look at these, you think, oh, they're quite flat. But it's the way you sew them on your bathers that gives you the actual flower. Okay, so that is the flower. Now, you're probably thinking that is a bit flat colour. Um, yeah, you would be right in saying that, but when you sew these to the bathers, like I say, it's the way I'm sewing them. Um, now, these are not on the pattern at all, because the pattern's just showing you how to sew the pattern, nothing more than that. Um, but I just wanted to add a little bit of dimension to it. So, um, I can't remember how many I've sewn, but I will show you when we come to sewing the elastic and the top together but um you'll need well you'll need a couple if you want to, to create that full look but um yeah five of them should give you a perfect flower i mean you could do different circles um to give you different sizes it all depends so that's our straps our hoops and the flower making and i will see you in the next step of making a tankini have a lovely rest of the week wherever you are in the world and i will catch up with you then bye for now